I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your host for Nova Science Now. Can you imagine sitting down for a meal and getting served something that you know will taste so bitter, so vile, but it's really good for you and you have no choice but to eat it? Thank you. For some people out there, this is just what it's like to eat foods that most others find delicious. Why do people have such different reactions to the same thing? Well, as I found out, the answer may just lie in their genes. <laughs> Nasty. Some kids love to eat. They'll eat almost anything. But others just hate the foods that are best for them. I like that green stuff. I want it. Some kids are picky eaters. According to my mom, I was never one of them. Ever since he was a little toddler, he ate everything that was put in front of him. And it's a good thing I did. There was no question about being picky. I didn't even know what the word meant. So why are some people picky and others not? Just like we all differ in our ability to see and to hear, people differ in their ability to taste. What makes a dish taste good to some people and terrible to others. I was determined to find out. And I couldn't think of a better way to do it than to invite biologist Bob Margolski and Stuart Firestein for a tasty meal. I love good food. Although, it's still a mystery to me how my sense of taste works. So, to set me straight, the chef and my colleagues came up with a little experiment. Much to my surprise, it involved a lot more than my tongue. Hey, wait, my food is coming. What, what are you doing? I'm over here now, Neil. Ready for this experiment? I'm ready to eat. All right, open wide, here it comes. I want you to describe now just what you're sensing in your mouth. I don't taste anything. That's because flavor really consists of several different sensory modalities. It's not just the taste in your mouth, right. but also the way the food smells in your nose, the way it looks on the plate, the way it feels in your mouth. Okay. I'm gonna take the nose plug off, and okay. I want you to breathe out okay. when I do that. Okay, breathe out. Wow, completely different. Oh, it's fruit. I get some sort of sweet spices, like I get a little bit of cinnamon, maybe a little bit of clove. So now let's have a look at what you've been eating. Jello. All right, so why couldn't I taste it without my nose? Why should my nose have anything to do with it at all? Well, I think evolution has seen fit to devote as much of our sensory apparatus as possible to what we eat. You are, after all, what you eat. And so were our caveman ancestors. They had to use all their senses to find the nutrients they needed to survive mm -hmm. in a hostile environment. And just like us, they probably loved sweets. And there's an evolutionary reason for that. The sugar in sweet foods provides a lot of energy. Sweet is very important, and most people strongly prefer sweet. This is a direct measure of the nutritive value of a food. On the other hand, we have a very different relationship with that bitter taste in many vegetables. Bitter is a warning. Bitter is a protective sense. It's a signal for something potentially poisonous. The plant puts out a toxic compound so that people won't eat it. So the bitter flavor in a plant prevents people from eating it. Our bitter taste buds honor and respect that fact in the plant. Yes. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Finally, you got it. <laughs> I got it. But my colleagues still hadn't explained why people like me love eating broccoli while others think it's got a nasty, bitter flavor. Stuart and Bob assured me the answer to this taste bud mystery was on the tip of my tongue. These are taste buds, and those long, slender, leaf-like shapes are taste cells. These cells enable us to detect five basic flavors, sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and umami, the Japanese word for the savory taste in meat and cheese. On the outside of each taste cell are finger-like projections covered with hundreds of tiny taste receptors. And when those receptors bind with the foods we eat, it opens a chemical pathway into the cell that leads all the way up to the brain. That's what we call taste. 
So why do some people hate that bitter taste found in green plants like broccoli and Brussels sprouts? And others, like me, enjoy it. It's all because of those little taste receptors on your tongue. They're actually proteins made by your genes. You've heard of genes. They're subunits of our DNA, that long chain of four chemicals best known by their initials, A, C, G, and T. Biologists have discovered that out of the thousands of genes in our DNA, there's one that determines if we like the taste of some healthy greens or if we can't stand them. And that single gene was discovered by geneticist Dennis Drena. He found it by testing how strongly people react to the taste of PTC, a compound a lot like the chemical found naturally in vegetables like cauliflower and broccoli. While some people hate the taste of PTC, oh. others can't taste it at all. Dennis found the reason why, and it's in our genes. Lo and behold, what did we find? We ultimately were able to pinpoint the actual gene that causes this. Aha! <laughs> A gene that determines how we perceive that bitter flavor in broccoli that so many people hate. So I have this perfectly prepared salmon on this sauce of broccoli. As I chowed down on a plate of healthy greens, I wanted to know just how this gene works and why it turns some of us into broccoli eaters and others into picky eaters. Geneticist Danielle Reed and biopsychologist Julie Manella are finding answers to this question with the help of middle school students like these. So the experiment we're going to do today was actually quite fun. One, two, Three. Students rub their cheeks with a sterile swab, giving researchers easy access to a sample of their DNA. Those four letters in DNA? They're packed into 23 pairs of chromosomes. On one of those pairs is the gene they're looking for. You get one chromosome from your mom and one chromosome from your dad. So this chromosome might have a gene that's a non-taster gene. And this chromosome from your dad might also be a non-taster gene. Non-tasters don't taste the bitterness in many vegetables because they have the letters GTA in that order in a certain spot on the gene. When you get GTA from your mom and dad, those taste receptors on your tongue can't bind with the bitterness in broccoli. But instead, if you get the letters CCG from both your mom and dad, you can taste the bitterness in broccoli and you're a taster. And that makes you very sensitive to bitter. Now, I bet you're wondering what would happen if you got one of each. You might think of that as being a medium bitter taster. Over time, it may be possible for medium bitter tasters to actually learn to like the bitterness in broccoli. Back in the lab, Danielle analyzes the kids' swabs. She thinks she can predict who hates the bitterness of broccoli based solely on their DNA. She then returns to the classroom so now... to share the results with the students and their parents. But first, she gives each kid some PTC to drink. As she expects, some taste absolutely nothing, while others wish that they had stayed home. Especially Reed and Jared. When they see their DNA results, it comes as no surprise. They both got the form of this gene, which makes them very sensitive to bitter. And guess what? Neither of them likes broccoli. She did come right over to me afterwards and said, see, I told you I don't like vegetables. <laughs> Maybe I'll give her some slack. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a little more empathy, I guess, <laughs> at this point. So what you're telling me is that the picky eating children are not accountable for being picky eaters. It's in their genes. It is biologically predetermined. They are innocent in this accusatory world. <laughs> so what are parents to do with their picky eater? <laughs> Let them eat cake? Oh. <laughs> My favorite part. In the end, are we really held hostage by our genes? Oh, man, that's good. Oh. Not entirely. Remember at the beginning of my meal, when I found out just how much our senses work together to create our perception of flavor? It turns out, over time, 
that our sense of smell changes. And that affects our sense of taste, no matter what kind of genes we have. In a recent study, my dining companion, Stuart Firestein, found that of the thousand genes in the mouse genome used for smell, not all of them are active throughout life. Maybe the same is true for us. And so we think over our lifetime, our sense of smell changes. So that something which smelled really bad, like Brussels sprouts, for example, or spinach when we were a kid, and therefore gave us a bad feeling for the taste, now smells much better. So uh -huh. young children will avoid bitter much more than the adult, and they are more sensitive and more preferring of sweet. They have a sweet tooth. They like lots of fat, lots of sugar. What you're saying is you have biogenetic argument for why the children's menu on every single restaurant in America doesn't have vegetables in it. No green vegetables, and there's always something fried and an and a ice cream dessert at the end. Boy, that sounds good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So next time you get frustrated with your picky eater, take a moment to relax. And remember, their genes may be influencing their food choices just as much as you are.